Matt, thanks for joining me today. Thank you. Matt, you're, uh, you cover the cannabis sector for Canaccord? I do. Okay, and so tell me about what you see happening in the sector generally after July 1st, 2018. Well, July 1st, 2018 is obviously the big date. Uh, I think there's a lot uh, to happen even before then, uh, mm -hmm. for certainly all the provincial uh, frameworks are getting set up right now. There's a uh, consideration of what the models might look like, but I think in July 1, uh, what we're expecting to see is a huge influx of recreational demand. Mm -hmm. uh, however, we're very careful in how we make that assessment because in order for that demand to come through, there has to be infrastructure in place, retail distribution, all of those things province by province, and the LPs themselves have to have enough capacity online to be able to facilitate not only the existing medical patient demand that continues to grow, but also recreational. So I do think there'll be bumps in the road, but mm -hmm. I think the government is taking an approach of having more of a flour, low concentrated oils in the first year, sure. moving over to some more of the you know products that are recreational friendly, if you want to call it that, things you'd see in, in a lot of the U.S. states that have been legalized for a while now. That looks like it might not be online till July of 2019, which gives them time. So I think it's going to take a couple of years for uh, maybe even more than a couple of years for the market to sort of mature into a state where there's enough supply and demand dynamics that have been normalized and mm -hmm. everyone can get all the different products that a normalized uh, industry, particularly in this industry, would, would demand. But uh, I think that there will, like I said, be bumps in the road with it, but I think it's going to be a tremendous opportunity for a lot of the players in the space today. Sure. Do you see any uh, risk that the July 1st, 2018 deadline will come and go without legislation due to the fact that A, the Senate has yet to weigh in on it or approve the Bill C-45 or mm -hmm. any other risks? I think it's certainly a risk. You can't assign it zero in terms of its risk. I don't think that it's something that I'm particularly worried about for the fact that you know, more than 60 or 65 percent of Canadians do support uh, marijuana being legalized. It's something that a lot of money is being invested province by province in terms of, uh, you know, all the infrastructure, like I said, that's going to be needed to roll it out, mm -hmm. all the jobs that are going to be associated with it, the LPs that are continuing to hire as they continue to expand. So I don't think either party has the incentive to throw a wrench in it. I think what the, you know, Conservatives particularly uh, are probably going to vocalize is they want to make sure they do it in the safest way possible. And as we sit here in December, going to July, is that enough time? I think that's a legitimate question to ask and a legitimate conversation to have, but I don't think there's really anyone's incentivized to make sure that, uh, to incentivized to have that deadline get pushed. So yeah. I do fully expect July 1 to be legalized, but I think it could mean different things. July hmm. 1 being legalized doesn't mean all of a sudden the switch is turned on and you can get cannabis everywhere. Right. It might mean that Ontario hits maybe 25 of the 40 stores they're planning, or maybe they'll hit more than that, who knows. But it's going to turn on, in my view, but absolutely there is some modest risk to it based on uh, this getting through the Senate. Sure. So this, the federal government makes no secret about its sort of plan to license as many LPs as it possibly can on a reasonable basis mm -hmm. in an effort to drive down the cost of cannabis for recreational users to coincide side with that timing mm -hmm. and that's how they want to undermine the black market and drive more people into the legal market. Uh, do you think that there's a risk to the industry generally because of the vast proliferation of new licensees that's coming out of Health Canada? Well, I don't, it depends on where you want to assign the risk because I think, you know, we've seen now and I've been covering the space for, for over a year, you do see how long it takes to ramp up a facility with, within Health Can Canada's very stringent standards. You do see bumps in the road. We have had pesticide issues in the space. So letting a license online tomorrow doesn't necessarily get you any incremental supply for July. So I don't think some of the late stages, that's not to say there won't be participa participants in the industry that are coming online recently uh, that will have a, a place in this space. I think there's a lot of interesting stories, but there's a lot of companies out there that are highly, highly capitalized, as you know, and mm -hmm. I think those, those, those companies have a significant first mover advantage uh, you know the influx of, of licenses coming online I think the government wants to try and, 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 and be fair and let other smaller players come into the space but again you know it's going to be uh, the invisible hand at the end of the day that that sort of dictates where this thing goes and I think that there's a lot of leaders in the space right now that can facilitate quite a bit of the demand uh, up front uh, obviously there's a lot there's a longer way to go uh, so I do think that your late stage applicants today or people that are coming online today there's probably a higher risk for them that they will be you know a large part of, uh, of this industry but that's not to say there won't be cases where, where they are. Mm -hmm. Canaccord is probably the largest uh, institutional player in the space, probably written more checks into the space than any other investment bank in Canada. So I imagine that you're in a prime position to talk about the idea of valuation. I'm concerned that the number of new licensees are going to have a harder and harder time getting a decent valuation to access public capital should they choose that route. Mm -hmm based on the fact that with every new license, the implied valuation of the sector goes down somewhat. From Canaccord's perspective, 
What is the value of a newly licensed ACMPR producer who is not yet public? Yeah, so I can't put a particular number to it, of course, but I can tell you that I, I like the way you look at it. The way, and it's similar to how I look at it, there's a pie out there that needs to be divided up. And as the government decides they're going to have retail distribution come online, that takes a little bit away of the pie. The taxes that were disclosed a couple of weeks ago, that takes a bit of a piece of the pie. Sure. Uh, more competition obviously shrinks the pie on, on, a, on a pound for pound basis. So obviously more and more licenses coming in uh, makes it more competitive for everyone else. But I think the amount, like I said before, the amount of capital and the amount of experience and expertise uh, that some of the larger players have in the space is going to make it very, very hard for the, the, you know, the lower end if you want to call it. I don't know if that's the right term exactly, right. but someone that's newer to the space that mm -hmm. need, still needs some money to, to, to continue their build out that maybe isn't going to be up and running till after recreational comes into play. I think that will be more challenging for those players. Again, I don't want to discount anyone. I think that I would assign a higher risk to a company like that, which of course would, would lead to a lower valuation. So I think as more and more LPs come onto the space, the incremental value of the next LP becomes less and less. Sure. Well, that's great, Matt. That's a great introduction to you and Canaccord's coverage of the space. We'll come back to you in a quarter's time and hopefully have another conversation, see where we're at. Thanks look, for joining me today. Look forward to it.